A fresh crack for a fresh segment. <laughs> Bienvenidos. That's, that's, a, that's a Spanish Chris Harris. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Back to the Harris of football <laughs> a podcast. <laughs> well, this is uh, welcome back to Married to the Game. We're going to get into some more of this preseason transactions. Teddy Bridgewater gets traded to the Saints for a third round pick. It's a pretty substantial little trade there. A decent little trade. I guess things paid off for the Jets there a little bit. Not, not upset about a third rounder. Great for both sides. They get a six. I think they got a, gave away a six. And got a third and Bre- and you, third and Bridgewater. Uh, good, good trade. Sure they for were both teams. Or no, fresh popping in over there. I mean, you think about it from the Jets' perspective. It's not like they really legitimately have a chance to win this year. They obviously won more last year than we thought they would, but it's not like they're you know win now mode. Obviously, the Saints are. I think it's a great trade. And I, honestly, I think that in last week when we saw Teddy Bridgewater the last two weeks crushing it in the preseason, I think we all thought the Jets would get more than the third. So they're for the Saints. Good for them for right. only giving up a third. Some people say they gave up a third. Oh, my God. I'm like, well, only a third? You can make that up. Now you just got right. a good quality backup, which we're going about to talk about here. But, I mean, I think that's a solid pickup for the Saints. Well, let's we're, we'll talk a little, Teddy, and then we'll talk about what this kind of means maybe for the Saints. And one thing we've talked about on this podcast numerous occasions at, on different years mm-hmm. is talking about having trust in the life a b well yeah having trust in the players that you're drafting on the saints life a b which after breeze you know obviously drew Brees is one of the most prolific uh quarterbacks in nfl history uh, like, most i will say he's the most underrated quarterback in nfl history right and certainly made plenty of receivers all-stars who weren't all-stars and just exactly built a sick offense and just Put the ball down the field. Yeah. He's an awesome player. Yeah. Um, but he's 40. But he's 40. So, you know, you're drafting 40. these Michael Thomases kind of high. You're drafting, you know, your Kamaras and Ingrams. And uh, you got Traquan Smith now over there. And so you're, you're putting these Saints on your team. You, everybody wants a Saint. You got to want a Saint, but it's Dynasty. Right. So at first we were pretty concerned about, uh, you know, Michael Thomas and... Um, his future after breeze because la- at this point last year we weren't even sure what breeze was going to do he had no right. contract it was exactly right. in march was, in march he signed a, th- a two-year deal right yeah there was talk about him maybe relieving or this or you know hanging lots it of up different, lots he, of different he things he didn't want to extend his contract last year because he wanted to weigh his options at the end of the season and then they ended up almost making it to the super bowl and he was like let's I'll take fifty mil. Come on, give me two more years. Well, Let's because they had they have had they went from having one of the worst defenses into the league, and the two years they all of a sudden they got one of the best defenses in the league and an yeah. offensive line that's awesome. Yeah, so that right. happened two very running backs. very quickly. That all of a sudden the Saints went from being eight and eight to being a you know or even a I stack think defense even, and a team full of studs on offense. Dropped down to five and eleven one year and six and ten. You know they, they a great quarterback can only win so many games by himself. And even with the scheme, and now, yeah, they, like right. with that, with that hang up on Drew Brees's future last year, it was life. A B, it was what would you do right. after Brees and, and AP Peyton, right? Because yeah, I feel like if if, if Brees goes, Peyton probably that's what we were talking go. about last and, preseason. And exactly. There's this whole cloud, and when when they traded for Teddy Bridgewater, it kind of like I don't know for if this is a right feeling or not, but I felt like a little bit better about my. Saint I've, stock long term. Well, I think it. I, to me, I would. I would go farther than that. As soon as I saw that trade go through, the first thing that popped in my mind was there. My, Michael Thomas is so much safer. Obviously, his quality. I think Casey would tell you. I mean, you know, Michael Thomas last year, and based on his last, you know, his first two years in the league, he's obviously an elite player. But you're elite when. Drew Brees is hitting you in the numbers in stride every single and round. And you're schemed the in most, the open space the most, nonstop. Right, well, that's true. The scheme in the open space and the most accurate passer in, the, as in, in a 15-year career in the history of the NFL. And now you, Teddy is highly accurate. And he's super young, and he was super good before he got hurt. And now I just feel like that just puts the deadbolt on the future of these. I mean, for me, I mean, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen, how long Drew Brees is going to play. Obviously, the longer the better for fantasy. But I just felt like that Teddy pickup is, is I think it's great for everybody on the Saints moving forward. Well, if you want to talk about the Teddy part of this thing first, 
you, you said he was good. He was really good. A lot of people will say not so much. Like this, he was he completed a lot of balls, but he really wasn't playing great. It was very conservative. Well, he's um, a brand, he was a young young. Well, man. yeah, that, but everyone wants to point to that there was a high completion percentage, but he didn't throw any touchdowns. He threw a decent amount of interceptions. There was he didn't he didn't look like this quarterback that maybe wasn't. He kind of looked like maybe he was a backup for a little bit numbers wise, but. That's what a lot of people like to say. Yeah, that's and not I, what I was I, thinking. No, I, and I'm I'm not thinking that either because that's I, I hear a lot of that. And well, you when's know, the last time a second year quarterback had a high completion percentage? Give me. I that. mean, he does have a high. That's completion what I'm saying. But even but when he, he was a young it's, buck, it's the non. Uh, it's just a very conservative play that Teddy was kind of playing there, and everyone wants to point at it like it was some terrible thing. I think it's great. The Vikings had a very solid D in 2015, and this is a young pup quarterback, like you're saying. Like he was two years in the league, he was just getting digs as yeah. a rookie, and they were starting to build a little bit of chemistry. And yeah, yeah of course, like just don't turn it over right now. And the Vikings are going to play decent defense, and if you can complete some balls and keep get keep our defense fresh and get us maybe three points, we're going to be okay here. And they were 11 and five. Well, nobody exactly, and an, an overachieving 11 and five. Right. And part of that was because Teddy didn't turn it over. I mean, he threw some interceptions. He, he but threw you, uh, a fair amount of he, interceptions. He, he, for, it, for playing conservatively, it wasn't. But I, I'm with you. I'm not trying to. I'm I'm arguing the naysayers here. Right. I, well, that's what I'm saying is like whoever. Show me a second-year quarterback who's got a, a one of the highest completion percentages in the league and why you can say anything. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess. I guess. I guess we're excited about the Patrick Mahomes is going to throw it 80 yards down the field. And yeah, he'll now we're expecting him to throw interceptions because he's young and he's a potential next Brett Favre gunslinger. But we're also expecting the Chiefs to win like four games because of that. We're excited about Patrick Mahomes for fantasy. You know, it's like obviously we're talking about fantasy here and we're talking about what Teddy can do for your fantasy players, but the Saints are trying to win games, and if Drew Brees were to go down, they don't have a backup. Now they bring in Teddy Bridgewater. You keep this off. Teddy to, Bridgewater. To, to be fair, Taysom Hill has looked pretty good. I know. I, well, our Patreon listeners want to know about our opinions on Traquan Smith versus Cameron Meredith, and so in doing some research to answer their question, which we'll get to on the Patreon exclusive show, head over to the website, the FFDynasty.com slash uh, community or patreon.com slash the FF dynasty jason sent you with a long plug right here solid plug though well done sir but in, in maybe re- the easiest way to get there is go straight to our website the yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, right that's, in the that's middle all the way to the right it's just so it's just right there for you right yeah. in the middle of the page but it's not the right. in your, it's not in your face like it says like, become patron we're not rude about it you know <laughs> Very but kind. If, you, if you want some extra content nice and humble about it head over there so in doing <laughs> that research back to casey's point and looking at, at what traquan has done this this preseason as well as you know what cameron meredith finally got on the field in the fourth game He'll look pretty solid out there. Right. So better than I expected. But back to your Mr. Bridgewater. Teddy going over to there and, and they didn't have a backup and Drew, Drew Brees is, you know, if he goes down. Simmons you, is you old. Did, you didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, you They obviously made the trade because Teddy's looked pretty good as a Jet. He had a, knee, a devastating knee injury that was just. You know, it's impressive. I'm, he worked him way, his way back, and I may be biased here, and you're maybe biased here. Maybe we're not seeing the forest through the trees because I know we both been kind of Teddy guys and have a soft spot for him just because, just he seems like a good dude. Yeah, well, right? and you know when the, when the you talking about the devastating injury. Well, yeah, not many injuries come out where they say the teammates were crying right when it happened. Like when Teddy was a non-contact injury, and there, and this is like. And maybe it was because there was nothing out there to be seen, but like how many injuries do you actually see happen or not, you know, hear about where you don't see a photo or a video? Like we all, something always surfaces and nothing ever. I never saw anything of, I've never seen a picture of Teddy's knee. And that's, I think that's because how bad it was. They were saying to people were that, that his teammates were crying, how bad and ugly this thing must have looked. Yeah. And for the doctor to say that he can't believe he's where he is now. Maybe Zach Miller on that well, same level well i don't think leg, that was like not, a blood clot though yeah. he um, the reason they say he almost lost his leg was because of a blood clot not but i never saw that play either though well, that's, yes. yeah Just, it was out there though but that was in yeah. live action like this was practice and maybe there was no live action photo of it you know but you know what i'm saying like yeah. they, the boys were his teammates were crying devastating the injury sure so i was a teddy guy before he went down so yeah i got a soft spot for him yeah, I like the fact that he cried last year just sitting on the sidelines on the first game of the season to be back out there with a jersey on. You know what I mean? Right. Dude's a good kid, and he obviously worked his tail off to get back to where he is. And then he goes out there in the preseason with a Jets uniform on, 
and he looks great. He did. He looked very, very solid. And I think if there's one thing to come out of this trade here, and maybe Teddy never gets on the field and maybe he moves on from the Saints this is before true. it's his this time. This is true. We may not even and, see and, him and, until and we'll, he's kneeling the clock out. Right, but there's a good chance that, uh, that he will be playing for them at some point. Uh, but this, above all, should be just a fantastic learning experience for Teddy uh, Bridgewater. There's absolutely nothing conservative about Drew Brees. Um, True. And good point. He's just, Brees is a pro's pro, always grinding, always improving, and the the type of guy that I think Teddy is and the reason that we both kind of like him here, I don't think there's any way that Teddy's not going to see that, cling on to that as much information as Drew Brees is willing to share with Teddy, which he has to. I, if he's his teammate and and Teddy's all about it, there's no way that Brees isn't going to be about that life. Yeah, the boys go saddle up together. So I, I saddle up partner. I think <laughs> if if nothing else, even if he doesn't end up playing for them, this is going to be an awesome experience for this guy to help him progress his career. This is great. You know, point. like you said, it's only a guy who's had really two years in the league and he's, he came in there. He looked poised in the pocket back there. He was delivering nice, accurate balls. If you could just maybe get a little bit more of that uh, killer instinct in you, that breeze, I think could, you know, maybe help instill just a little bit in Teddy. Mm -hmm. I think, I think this could be, you could really help Teddy make, you know, the next step. It could be huge. Absolutely. <laughs> Huge.